Welcome everyone to Prime Time. I'm your host Beverly. The September 26th parliamentary elections is just a few days away. And so, in our final program of Prime Time's election series, our guests will explain why it's so important for you to go out and vote. So stay tuned and we'll be right back for This is Prime Time. At Najiko, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Magico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Hey, Bob, you're on family vacation. Oh, but your daughter's got the measles. But don't worry about it. With your Be Sure Travel Insurance, children under 12 are covered for free. Are you Be Sure? Be Sure. Yeah, for free. Welcome back and thank you very much for joining us and the continued support. Today we are winding down our final program with our election coverage. And in our studio today is the leader of the United People's Party, the UP Party, and that is Mr. Theo Heiliger, candidate number one. Thank you very much for joining us on the program, Theo. Good evening, Beverly, and um, thank you for having me on the program, and good evening to all your um, your viewers out there. Right, so so this program is going to be just airing in a couple of days. So how is this last week of campaigning going? Well, it, it's probably the, the most hectic um, time because now, you know, you have to get in all the last minute uh, meetings that you have. You know, one of the, the key issues is, um, you know, touching base with the, with the voter base itself. I've always uh, stated to my mother, I wish she had made me into a triplet because then we would be able to campaign even more. But, um, you know, it's long days, um, long nights, um, because, again, people want to see you, want to hear from you, and they want to, to hear what the issues of this campaign really are. Um, I will tell you that uh, it's been a very different election, probably, than all the elections that I've taken yes. part in, yes. Mm -hmm. How different? Well, it, it's a lot quieter compared to, um, well, you know... With all those songs and all uh, those um, flyers and all yeah. those big posters? Well, I think, it, well, to me, it's been a very quiet campaign for all political parties. Um, you know, not to brag, but we usually um, put the tempo or ease the tempo of a campaign. Um, you know, we've, we've done a much more subdued campaign than what we are accustomed to doing. Mm. And, um, you know, it's going to be a very interesting outcome uh, come um, within a few days. But again, the, the, the population itself has not been so enthusiastic okay. about an election. And I, I think it, it, it shows that uh, they're a bit upset about, the, you know, what has been transpiring over the last, um, yeah, over the last six years. You know, six governments in six oh. years, uh, it, it's just too much. And uh, people want to see some continuation, some stability in government. And I think, um, you know, they are showing their, yeah, their disbelief in the, in the political uh, arena by not, um, you know, turning out. You don't see the mass mm -hmm. rallies that um, were taking place in yeah. 2014. You don't see the amount of flags and, and cars, I'm saying, and, mm -hmm. and, and houses and, um, like I said, it, the political discussion uh, among the electorate is not what I have seen. And like I said, I've been in this thing for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. And um, you don't see it. And a lot of um, disgust and a bit of mistrust is, I, I think, out there mm -hmm. with the population. And, and that's what I've been seeing when I campaign. Uh, so what are they saying out there? Because you do a lot of house to house. Yes, more you personal know, contact. What are they saying to you yeah. when they see you? Hey, Theo, I feel this. My campaigns, yeah, I mean, you, you do, of course, your posters and mm -hmm. your, your jingles and your, your ads, but you, people really want to touch you, and that is very different. I keep saying it in the Caribbean. It's, it's a very 
uh, personal yeah. uh, campaign. Um, I think people want to hear from you, they want to touch you, they want to feel that um, you recognize um, that their vote counts, uh, that they are um, the, 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 the power when it comes to electing people to, to vote. And a, a lot of it, uh, Beverly, comes in, okay, what are you going to do to, I voted for you, Teo, mm -hmm. but you're not in government. And somebody I didn't vote for uh, throws you out of government. And, and then they say, well, why should I vote for you again? Yeah. And it's hard for me Ooh. in particular, uh, because again, the party uh, requires that I do well. Well, of course, I require that I do well, and the population requires that I do well. But it's become very hard to explain the yeah. population what this um, throwing down of government means and, and why um, a, a person with 200 votes can easily throw down an entire party with, with over 6,000 votes, you know? Um, that is the, 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 the key in my, import, uh, my thing. It's, it's about three points, really. Uh, what I've been hearing the, the population talk about, and, right. and that is the number one point. Yeah. And so how can you guarantee, how could we ever guarantee that we would have a stable government? Because that's actually what mm. we need. Yeah. We don't need um, one government for six months or eight months and then we have another government. There's no confidence in the island. So what, what's the magic? Well, you know, Beverly, I think that in, from when we received uh, the, this magical uh, 2010, um, 10, 10, 10 issue, uh, we, what we really took is the exact duplicate of what the electoral system is in the Netherlands. And um, mm -hmm. I think they have had issues with, with that electoral uh -huh. system. Um, we definitely have the, the issues with the electoral system. Um, when we were part of the island council, we used to be island council member. And you used to, you can also be an executive council member. Right. So you had the cohesion mm -hmm. um, in there because there was a collective responsibility. Right. And then when you go into the island council to defend the position of the executive council, you 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 really fought as a punch. You know mm -hmm. um, now because there is. Um, uh, a difference between Parliament and that of the Council of Ministers. Yes. You feel that Parliament mm -hmm. feels itself that they're not involved in the decision making, yeah. they're not involved of the day-to-day -day process of what is going on. So you feel that, you know, a disconnect between, let's call it the, the people mm -hmm. and the governing of the of the country. You know, I've always been an admirer of the, um, the Westminster system, more the British system itself in the sense that you're campaigning in a district and, and for that then it doesn't matter who really becomes minister uh, because you will do the things necessary for the district to make sure that that district it progresses, that district moves forward and um, right now we go for our votes uh, throughout the island. Uh, you can even look at a system where you elect a prime minister and then that, let that prime minister um, put in his or her cabinet. Right. And that would also, I think, uh, alleviate some of this um, nonsense that's going on every minute. If somebody wakes up with a headache, uh, they want to throw down the government. Um, the issue is, of course, you, you have um, certain members that, you know, want attention constantly and it's not the attention of the people. It is basically um, their needs and their wants um, when you're talking about the government. And I, I think that is to go and, mm -hmm. and fix the issue is going to take a lot of time um, uh, because the, the, the proposals that have come also have to pass the different points mm -hmm. uh, within government. You know, a lot of people say, yeah, but Teo, the, the, the seat belongs to the party. No, not in our constitution, because again, it comes down to the issue that you as a person have to um, take your oath, not the party. So right. I've always looked at it that you, you get on a bus and then you get off the bus and you forgot that the bus got you there. So um, in, in the case that it is the party that, that incurs the, the financial liability, it is the party that goes out there and markets the candidate, but is actually the candidate right. that becomes um, the That means the party. real benefit. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll take a break and when we come back, um, what are some issues that you are going to tackle immediately? Because um, we're not going to fool ourselves. The economy mm -hmm. is in a really sad state and mm -hmm. it needs fixing and really fixing fast. Yes. So what are some things that you're going to tackle immediately if you win, uh, if you are in government. So stay tuned and we'll be back in a moment. This is Prime Time. Travel Planners, an award-winning agency on St. Martin with a well-trained, knowledgeable and friendly staff dedicated to making your travel arrangements hassle-free. We can book your airline, car, 
cruise and hotel reservations to anywhere in the world. Visit our offices or log on to our website and take advantage of our special packages to the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. Travel planners voted best travel agency on St. Martin. Where Frankie? Where Frankie is? Where Frankie? Where Frankie is? Where Frankie? Where Frankie is? Where Frankie? Say we voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie. Where he is? We voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie. Not much to We voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie. Where he is? We voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie. And so are you. We voted Frankie. We're here at the outdoor sports meet. Oh, cut. These sand flies are murder. Wait, how come you aren't getting bitten? Mommy uses gorgeous for kids to protect me from them and the evil mosquitoes that give you dengue. <laughs> There's also Go Family Protection for us adults. Can't be too careful with the dengue scares. Here. Wow, this really works. Even the ants have stopped biting me. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Go protect yourself. Welcome back and thank you very much for joining us. This is Prime Time. You can see this program and all programs on YouTube and Facebook uh, at a leisure, at your own leisure. We're talking to party leader, the United People's Party. That's Mr. Theo Heiliger, candidate number one. He's the party leader. And so what tops the list of your priorities if elected? Well, Beverly, I think you, you hit it right. I mean, the, the biggest issue to us, if you... If you fix the economy, then you, of course, you get more taxes, uh, you get more revenue for government, then you can do the more social issues. Um, one of the, the, the biggest points that we have is that also by the changes of government, you've had numerous, and I say numerous, ministers of tourism, um, which really uh, mm -hmm. is the ones that push forward the, the economy of the country. And I can remember that I had the opportunity um, in years before of sitting nearly for 12 years as Commissioner of Tourism. Right. And you were able to build a, a very strong rapport, relationship, yeah. relationship yeah. With, with the cruise lines, mm -hmm. with the airlines, right. um, to where, you know, the point is that you pick up the phone, hey, why did we lose an aircraft? Why did we lose that ship to whatever island? Mm -hmm. And that is no longer there. You know, you, you, you're you changing ministers so fast. They mm -hmm. uh, Quite a few of them didn't even know the difference between Carnival and Royal Caribbean. And they're two of the biggest competitors or the difference between uh, American and JetBlue, for example, and, and that that's a real issue because, uh, you know, other islands are moving forward. Um, you know, you, you take our next door neighbor, St. Kitts. St. Kitts, uh, when I was commissioner of tourism, was about maybe 400,000 cruise ship passengers. Today, they are over the 1 million. They're about 1.1, 1.2 million and rising. And, um, you know, I, I've been to many Caribbean islands looking at what products and what what they do as, a, as a, you know, to, to get people to uh, come to their island. And they are now, if they haven't surpassed us, they are neck close with us. And uh, St. Martin itself is lagging behind, but not because, um, you know, the ability to do that. It is really leadership that has to push the country and propel it forward. I mean, uh, we're doing uh, little programs here and there with shows and that on the island. That is not enough to promote the island. I think the only promotion that we do on the island is when the SHTA um, does some ads in the in the newspapers in in the U.S. It's not just going to shows that doesn't help. You need to come up with a marketing uh, strategy. Mm -hmm. You need to come up with a marketing campaign, and we need to get back the ships. It's going to be difficult, um, Beverly, because like I said, uh, Totola um, has you know built a pair. Uh, Totola has uh, three of the lines committed to it, which is Norwegian Cruise Line, Disney Cruise Line, and MSC Cruise Line. And that is the 600,000 passengers that we lost. Right, yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, getting them back is going to be a, a, a major um, obstacle. Mm -hmm. um, I think also the issue of, of, of pension is going to be a, a major discussion because you, you have quite a, a large portion of the population that now is in the pensionable age. Yeah, you know, and before we were, when we were part of the Constellation and the Lens and Tillies, you had the issue of we were baby boomers. But right. guess what? Those baby boomers are now coming right. late boomers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, the, and a lot of the, the cry of the people has been the old age pension you know how can you live on 500 gillas how can you yes. live on 700 gillas yeah. and it, it is quite quite right i mean um, some of them um, stay in, in in places smaller than your studio mm -hmm. and uh, you know it, it's hurtful when i go and i sit there with them 
and that you, you know, people are asking you to help and you're telling them, well, society has changed yeah. because now if you help somebody, uh, you're vote buying, right. you know, right. so, um, yeah. you know, you have to be very careful, even if you buy them a drink. Um, so I, I think that the old age pension is going to be an, uh, a major issue. Um, I, again, I said job creation, housing for our population, uh, and then youth unemployment to me is, you uh -huh. know, an issue that is uh, uh, really um, a, a big festering. one. I would say festering. Yeah, because uh -huh. you have a lot of young men uh -huh. uh, that are upset, um, feel that they are not part of society, uh, feel that they are not being um, heard, uh -huh. and uh, they really want to, to have a voice in, in, in the community, and they want um, to be part of, you know, the, the well-being of the country. Um, I've, I've said to them, you might not like all the answers that I give you, but you got to be willing to also work um, right. in the country, you right. know. And many of the discussions that we have with, um, with businesses on the island, not only do we have to fix the economy, but you have to help us as businesses help fix our youth unemployment on St. Martin. Right. And, you know, you can't just come up with issues of paying business people to hire people. Um, right. They have to actively, those young people want to work, um, Beverly. And, and so those are, I think, the, the key components um, that what I'm hearing out there from the population. Okay, your opinion on the um, recent um, turning of the soil for the, the Chinese project. Your um, opinion on that? Well, uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, the, the jury is, um, is not out completely, but I can give you experience of what I've seen throughout the Caribbean and the experience that I've had <clears throat> with the Causeway project itself, <clears throat> where the Chinese came, and they offered to build it, and offered to build it, I think, 20 to 30 percent cheaper. At the end of the day, though, uh, the problem is that they bring in the entire labor to build it. They bring in all of the equipment, so all of the trucks, the excavators, the concrete, or whatever, and they bring in the housing, they bring in the food. So there's nothing that actually stays in mm -hmm. the economy. Mm -hmm. um, with this, um, this project in, in, in Bel Air, you know, it, it's nice that uh, you get an economic boost. But the question would be then, uh, who is the, the boost for? I mean, I can remember projects that I've done, and we've always made sure at least 40% of whatever uh, of the project is staying here. I'm, I'm hearing after the fact that when the project is finished, yes, you, you'll create jobs. At the end of the day, though, <laughs> those jobs, I think, are going to be related. Uh, one, it's going to be an issue of the, the language barrier, uh, because Chinese itself coming to the island, uh, you're going to have to make sure that, well, you're going to have to learn the, 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 the language if you really want to work with them. Um, and that is something that we've been multilingual in St. Martin, but I'm not so sure if we're ready for the um, Far East um, yeah. product as yet, you know. St. Martin has geared itself towards uh, a U.S.-based um, economy, uh, a European-based um, clientele, and even to that fact, South, um, South America, America, because you've got the Spanish, the French, and the English. Um, now we're going into a complete different language that um, less than probably 5% of the country or less than 2% of the country even knows that dialect or that um, language. So that is going to be something that we're going to have to look at. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, we'll take a break and we'll come back. Um, yeah, we're going to be asking you, um, what can you do to stay in government? That's a big challenge. I mean, after... after Scoring the last time, nine, 1,925 votes is what you um, attained the last time. What do what you think you're going to do this year? Let's look through the, look, um, the looking glass. We'll be back in a moment. This is Prime Time. A cruise is a great adventure. Not only for passengers, also for us. The Port of St. Martin. Our port always reflected the needs and aspirations of the time. From the first to the 1.75 millionth passenger in 2013. Our cruise story started in 1963 with our first cruise passenger. 50 great years later. 20 million passengers later. Thousands of cruise berths later. We've become the leading port in the Caribbean. 50 fantastic years, like a dream. The dream of Port St. Martin lives on and reinvents itself every day. The best is yet to come. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. 
Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Where Frankie? Where Frankie is? Where Frankie? Where Frankie is? Where Frankie? Where Frankie is? Where Frankie? Say we voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie. Where he is? We voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie. Not much true. We voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie. Where he is? We voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie, voted for Frankie. And so are you. We voted Frankie. Now in 2014, you attained 1,925 votes. How are you feeling now? What do what, what you think you're going to be able to churn out this time? Well, you know, um, Beverly, um, elections are an unpredictable mm -hmm. event. Um, it depends on how well you marketed yourself, how many people you spoke to, and if the message that you are sending is clear, concise, and that the people believe in what you are. So I always um, send out a message and I tell that to the candidates. You have one vote. Um, depends on what you say and what you do out there, then you'll see. So I can only tell you that at this stage in my um, term that I'm going to continue on that same belief. I have one vote. I sometimes even look in the mirror and say, make sure you vote for yourself. Uh -huh. But um, that's uh -huh. the way I approach the elections. Um, how challenging is it going to be this year? Is it going to be wi uh, wider spread, seeing that we have nine parties um, contesting the election this round? Well, you have, um, what, 140 candidates. Yeah. And I was just saying, imagine if just uh, each candidate got 10 votes. That's probably close to two seats between just the amount of candidates. Um, it's, I, I, I think, I've, I've never seen it so um, among the many mm -hmm. parties, but also the amount of candidates each party has, has been able to push forward. Um, is that really good for the country? Well, let me put it this way. It's great for democracy. Uh, right. Because it shows that democracy in, in, in St. Martin mm -hmm. is, is, is alive, alive and, and well. well. Mm -hmm. And um, the issue, though, of course, uh, having a population and having parties so fragmented, um, uh, it is going to have its challenges and its difficulties in being able to govern a country. Um, imagine if every one of the small parties um, gets it's a seat. A seat. Uh, then you're in negotiating mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. all of these small parties to bring a coalition together. And you have the issue then of uh, trying to bring the minds and their philosophies into how far are you willing to go to the left, how far are you willing to go to the right. And what has happened to um, Beverly is that you don't really have a clear cut division of who's left, who's right, who's in the middle. Uh, nearly all the parties are more or less in the middle and it, it, it tends to waver somewhat when it goes towards the populace. You know, what is the more uh, you know, um, yeah, um, for the po population itself. So I think that that's going to be a key. Uh, it comes down to the personalities involved. You know, a lot of the other parties, oh, I don't, I don't want to work with Theo, so we're not going to um, work with him. We're going to form a coalition outside. And, and that's what more or less you, you might see as well. Is that going to boil long as we would say, always the bridesmaid and never the bride? Well, you know, um, the, the situation of this is that mm -hmm. uh, you have a coalition government now. I think that they have more or less uh, made it um, fit that they will continue on with that coalition. So it's really the UP against the three um, established parties that are in government now, and then the other, um, what is it, eight more that are out there, whatever it is. When you really sit down and think about it seriously, is it discouraging? You know, to know that you would say you have the majority of the votes, but you're still in the opposition. Well, you know, you, the, the population itself doesn't understand that. Eh? And even the members in government now blame me for things that, so when you sit down with the, with the, with the population, they say, but Theo, you didn't do this, you didn't fix this. I say, but I'm not even in government. 
Yeah, but you, you still control things. I said, no, I no, don't, don't control anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm in opposition. Oh, I didn't know, but we voted for you. You had the most votes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, but it doesn't work like okay. that, you know. And mm -hmm. a lot of people are constantly in the mm -hmm. case that, well, we voted for you. You got the most votes. And they don't understand that, Beverly. And it becomes, mm -hmm. a, a, even to a point where you try to explain, they get upset about the issue that, well, we see it um, that, you you know, we voted for you, but you, you're not in there. Why is that? Mm -hmm. And so... Um in before we wind down, because it's ending up really, really fast, the environmental protection is a is a real hot topic. Mm -hmm. um, where is our party on this matter? Well, you know, Beverly. Before, you know, a lot of people uh, uh, look at me for for big projects and things for the island, and I'll tell you something that no matter um, whether it was a small project, a big project, we have always been environmentally conscious in the sense that before any project goes ahead, we do environmental impact studies and have been required for any major project um, to do the environmental impact study. You know, when we started the harbor, um, the issue of the sand, they were going to pump the sand out to the ocean. And we said, no, we wanted the sand to go on the beach. And actually, that's why Phillipsburg is the way it is. Um, you know, we, we, we looked at when we, when we started with the, with the airport, that you had to do an environmental impact on the bridge, actually, the causeway, that you had to do an entire impact study of the lagoon. And we could tell you exactly what's wrong with the lagoon. Um, uh, any major hotel development as well, the same thing. Um, I can tell you that I've seen advices on this same Chinese project where the department is telling the, the council of ministers, hey, you need to do environmental impact study, you need to look at the water quality of the pond and things like that, and these things are being ignored. So while you have um, parties that when we were in government used to scream and shout, mm -hmm. they are doing even worse than when we were there. And, and that's the, the hurtful part about it, is that they're not following their own doctrine, actually getting the job done for the country. It is making sure the progress of the country um, goes well. Right, and so why should we vote? Why should they vote for Theo Heilecker, candidate number one? Quickly. Well, I mean, um, like I stated, you know... Yeah, asking them for your vote. Well, yeah. <laughs> you just talked about the they, party. They, they, so, well, <laughs> well, you know, like I said, um, you know, Theo Heilecker is committed, um, has always been committed to the population of St. Martin and looks forward to being able to achieve more for our great country. Okay, thank you very much, thank Theo, you, for joining us. Appreciate um, it. Let's, good luck. Thank yeah? you. Um, you're in the final, as we say, the song says, yeah. you're in the final countdown. There we go. All the best of luck. Thank this you. has been Prime Time. Thank you so much for watching us. And yeah, this is the end of our political series. We are back to normal next week and we continue to bring, me, bring you exciting programs here on Prime Time. May God bless you and I'll see you next week. <laughs>